Hello everyone, it's Adam Ratliff with Adam So Fun, and welcome back to the channel. And as you can tell, we're doing something a little different today. Um, I'm going to do some domestic machine quilting, and um, I have a long arm, and I love being on the long arm. And um, I will domestic machine quilt sometimes when I have to, if the project's really small. Um, even then, most of the time I'm going to toss on my long arm because... Um, I'm better at the long arm than I am on the, on the domestic. But um, today I have my HQ Stitch 510. I love doing domestic machine quilting on this because it it's kind of a breeze. We have a nice big throat on the, or not, not huge throat, but a nice big um, platform. And then with my sew study table, um, I just get a lot of quilting space. And I don't know if you follow me. If you don't, you should. But Adam's so fun, and that's S E W on Facebook and Instagram. I did some um, embroideries before I left to Texas. Um, me meanwhile, I've just been back for like uh, what five days. But um, I was using twist thread, which is a uh, uh, tri level poly thread from Superior and if I thought about it I would have grabbed some to have to show you but I can't because I don't where did I put it it's not on my thread bar because it's new uh, I think it, it's behind the bar but beside the point um, I did some embroideries with twist thread and metallic and now I'm going to domestic machine these samples so um, I did three of them I'm gonna start off with the butterfly and this is what that embroidery ended up looking like it seriously that twist thread adds so much dimension when you're um, quilting and stitching i hope you can see that i can't really see but shimmy 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 and um so yeah so i'm going to build my quilt sandwich come over here i've already um loaded up my so fine thread i'm gonna use so fine on the top and bobbin today so i've wound my bobbin on this machine i had to put a different sole plate on so um i bought well this is this is the free motion quilting set, but um, I purchased the convertible free motion quilting feet set. Oh, these are specialized quilting feet. I'm like, I know I have different things. So I, I purchased the convertible free motion quilting piece set, and in that you get a different uh, presser foot. Because on this machine, there's no like lowering the presser foot. So this brings that... Um, that sole plate, I mean sole plate, it brings the sole plate up to the same height as the presser feet so you can move around and not uh, mess around with those. So this is the old one. I have it just sitting right here. Um, and it just, it makes it easier to kind of slide that, slide that uh, fabric around. It also gave me um, a free motion presser foot that comes with a closed toed foot and an open toe foot. And then that other set that I showed you has a ruler foot and what was the other one? open from open toe quilt frame foot. So yeah, who knows? But I am going to build my sandwich and before I had the long arm, I was not a fan of making a quilt sandwich. So on the long arm, I don't have to make a quilt sandwich because I just load things on the bar and roll it up and it's like self-made. Um, today I'm using Quilter Select Free Fuse and if you haven't seen this, it's like a powder you sprinkle on. It's like baby powder. You sprinkle it on and then you hit it with a hot iron and it fuses it. So um, I was messing around with it. I, believe it or not, I just opened it today. Um, I do love a gadget. Come on. I was at a quilt show. I saw this. I'm like, I'll take two. Um, and I don't know why I needed to, but I have two. So, um, but I used it so nice because you just, like I said, you sprinkle it on and then you hit it with a warm iron and it sets everything. So I'm going to be using this and I will actually take you over and show you how this works. Um, this is fantastic. And you can ask your local quilt shop uh, if they don't have it, if they can purchase some for you. Um, it really is easy, but you'll see it and then you can decide. Um, other things, I have my sew study table on. I couldn't find my, um, what was it? My Supreme slider. Um, I have a large Supreme slider that I used to put on whenever I was free motion quilting. And um, it's a like a silicone sheet and it lets everything slide a little bit better. better. But with this big um, sew study table that is built just for this machine, it makes it so easy to slide around. So um, I haven't had an issue with that. I am going to be really fancy and I'm using two different color gloves um, because I can't find the right-handed glove to this one. And 
I almost had to use the left-handed one backwards, but I found my right-handed one in the yellow. So I'm making it work, people. I'm making it work. Um, so yeah, let's go over. I need to stabilize this. Oh, design-wise. So I was messing around with designs, um, and I had everything where I wanted it, and then I moved it all. So it's not sitting here, but um, I'll bring it and show it to you whenever I go over to um, press. But um, there's kind of, this kind of makes like an oval shape. So I'm going to leave the center part open to have that puff a little bit and do some type of feather design around the outside. Um, I found an oval template, like an oval ruler that I would use on my long arm. And I'm going to use that for some lines to um, give me my stems of my feathers. And um, yeah, we'll go, we'll go from there. You know, I'm just having fun again. If this were uh, real life, usually I'd load it up on the long arm. But I'm like, hey, let's do some domestic machine quilting. We got to make sure everyone is involved, right? So I'm going to jump over to the iron and we will reset up and see you back here in a second. All right. I know I'm probably out of the camera, but you can see the top. This is that uh, Quilter Select um, Free Fuse powder. And I laid my top down and I went ahead and kind of drew some blue lines so I can make sure that I am dusting where I actually want this top to lay out. Because especially when we're domestic machine quilting, our backing and batting are going to be a little bit larger. So I'm just going to fold this over. And I'm not being super precise. I just want to not put a crease in it. And I can see my little blue lines. And this is simply a powder that I can dust on. And um, remember, my first time, I don't know how much I'm supposed to use, but this is how I did it when I put the back on and it worked good. We'll do a little bit, just like Parmesan cheese, right? I love pizza, but you all know, I just love food. I'll spread this out. So it's not gonna stick until I hit it with that heat. So I can fold this side back and continue. And I can see where it's hit, especially with that very bright light on. Oh, that really got it coming out. I don't need that extra splurge. My iron is heated up. So I'm going to hit it with a hot iron. I'm going to try not to iron over this um, whenever I get to this part, because I'll just start over here and kind of press down. When I get to the center, I'll put a pressing cloth over and I just have just a regular pressing cloth. I did get this new iron. This is a reliable, I think it's called Maven. It's one of those ste uh, the steam generators. So you hit the button and the steam comes out. I am in love with this thing. I had one before I got this. We had a different brand and I wasn't the biggest fan of it. So I thought, hey, you know what? That's a few years old. Try a new one. And I'm, again, it's brand new. So I've only had it for uh, a few weeks. I think I had it for a week before I left, but I am absolutely loving it at the moment. But what you can see is that it gets really hot. It's almost like if you're using like steam a seam or um, any type of those kind of fusibles, how they get really hot when you hit them with the, uh, with the iron. I'm not using steam. It doesn't say I have to, so I'm not. Although I am a big fan of steam. I'll use the point to get in there pretty close. And like I said, when I quilt this, I'm not going to quilt really, really close to the design. I'll leave a little bit of a border around it. And then if I have to, if I don't like what it looks like, I can always go back in and quilt some more. I can feel some of that powder here, so I have to be careful because I don't want to make my iron sticky. So good job with my blue lines, apparently. <laughs> And now I will put my pressing cloth over it. And I think the directions actually tell you to use a pressing cloth. Um, I found that it worked better for me without. All right. 
So there is my ironed on my sandwich. There's a few little wrinkles when it goes in there, but that's fine because there's batting and everything. But um, not bad for not having to pin and do all that other stuff. So now um, I told you that I had a I had an oval template that was somewhat what I was thinking of. So I'm going to pretend that this is my area. This is just a Marks Be Gone uh, water soluble blue pin. And I'm going to have feathers kind of shooting off around this. So I might have my first set coming like this and my next set coming out and just continue my way how I might think these will shoot off. And remember, it is all up to you. You are the creator. It is your process. There's no right and wrong. I just thought, you know what? Let's do some domestic free motion quilting. And I could actually hit this one here and then just connect that one there. So there's my kind of outline and how I'm going to do it. Um, we'll take you back to the machine and I will start stitching this out. <laughs> Wish me luck. All right, I hope this angle's good for you. You can see my needle, everything's threaded. I have my um, free motion foot on. Um, I've changed my stitch length to zero. It's just something that I've always done whenever I domestic machine quilt. Um, I usually leave my feed dogs up. So by changing it to zero, they move straight up and down instead of trying to move the fabric. So it's one less thing to um, worry about. I just picked an intersection and I'm gonna start here. So I'm gonna stitch my feathers up this row. I can stitch back the um, back down my spine and then start to stitch them up here. I am not sure if I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do over here. I might do another design or I might come back and do feathers, but I'm gonna do work all the way around these outside pieces first and then I'm going to decide what I want to add. So I'm just going to put my foot down, needle down, needle up while I hold my thread tail. Oops, fuzz already. Now it's stuck to my gloves. Needle down, needle up. Bring my foot up and I can pick up that bobbin. Then I'll put my foot back down and this is the same thing we do on the um, long arms. And I'm just going to needle up and down a few times to do a tack off stitch. Now, um, again, I don't do a lot of domestic machine quilting, so don't judge me. Remember, what do we say? At least you're doing it. Um, I know, let's see. Oh, this machine stitches very fast. So I've turned it as slow as it can go, but I also like to just pedal to the metal. So you're not trying to find, you know, your sweet spot. Um, the pedal to the metal is my sweet spot. So I'm going to pedal to the metal and fingers crossed, this looks good. And we'll just start going. Now you'll notice that I'm going to move my hands a lot. I just, I just trying to be comfort. It's all about making sure you're comfortable. You can see where you're going and what's going on. And now I'm back here. I'm going to travel down, back down that spine. I'm at a new piece, so I will pivot. Do any of you watch Friends, the pivot episode when they're moving the couch? I hope someone, I hope someone out there gets it. But let me move my stuff around. 
And this is the reason I bought a long arm. I was tired of trying to manip manipulate this fabric. All right, so now I'm gonna work off this one. Do the same thing. Now, something I just noticed, when I stitch feathers on the long arm, I don't usually come back down. I'll connect all my stems at the end whenever I travel back down that, that stem. But in this case, I'm not traveling back down the stem, so I'm going to have to remember to come back and pick up this piece and keep that in mind for future as I continue to do this. I'm not going to travel back down these. I'm not ever going to collect those um, stems up, so I need to make sure that I'm traveling all the way down to connect. So now I'm going to travel back down that stem and um, just work my way around. And I won't make you watch me do all of this. So I will see you back here when I'm done. All right, that is done. I will um, do a few up needle up and down, which I probably don't have to do because I was stitching so close together. I had the pedal go into the metal. Oh, I missed my little tie off button on my infinity. And um, I can put this up, pull some slack and get my bobbin up if I uh -oh. Let's see. Middle down, middle up, and here. There we are. I need a glove off. What I did is I pulled up my bobbin, just like if I were on the long arm, and I can get my scissors and snip. And snip. There we are. And well, I guess I'm just putting it right back to where it was. But there you have it. There's my um, feathers. I don't know what I'm going to do over here. And I think I might just make that another video because until I know what I'm going to do there, I don't want to just start filling things in. Um, you can't even see what I'm talking about. But there we are. I don't know what I'm going to do in these outside areas, but um, I'll just wait until I have decided and I will make another video for you. But um, yeah, what do you think? Do you want to see more of these videos? Uh, who knows? Uh, I'm going to switch the camera around. We'll see you back here in a second. All right, so that was a little bit of domestic free motion quilting on my HQ Stitch 510 machine. Um, 
I really do love this machine. I mean, it pieces great. You can free motion quilt on it. It's um, it's just a workhorse. It is a heavy duty machine that can get that work done. Um, here's the finished little piece. I'm very proud of it. I'm happy with it. Again, I'm not sure what I'm going to do in those other spots. I will probably take a picture of this and play around with it on my iPad. Um, I have a app called Procreate where um, on my iPad Pro where I can go in and draw. So I usually take a picture and that's how I help design quilts and everything. Um, keep an eye out. I have a video coming out how um, a quilt I'm quilting for uh, Stitch House in Dallas. If you are a domestic machine quilter, if you don't have a long arm, if you fa fell upon my videos for some other reason and you are a domestic machine quilter, um, make sure to go follow uh, Jane Halprich, who is Stitch by Stitch Custom Quilting. Check her out. I'll link her below. Um, she is a fantastic domestic machine quilter. So, um, you know, if I can just do one tenth of what some of my colleagues can do, then I am happy. This might be one eighth. Um, and I, you know, it, as you were watching, you probably saw a few places like where I tripped up and you know what? I just went on. I don't worry about that stuff. Remember at the end of the day, it's just quilting. Um, I know here messed up. I got, I got distracted with what was happening and happening with the quilt inside my throat and I mismanaged a little bit. So I just keep going. You know what? I this the spine I drew was just a just a reference and I jumped right off that spine and just continued to go back where I was. I don't worry about things like that. It's it's just quilting. Have a good time. Enjoy the process. And you'll notice as you do them from where I started, I won't count where I ended, but until one before I ended it got it got good. It got really good until I let my mind stray. I started thinking about something else and mismanaged my quilt. So, um, you know what? Thank you for joining me. As always, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you're notified when new videos drop. Um, I like I said, I'm gonna link to Jane below. So go give her some love. She has a YouTube channel, I believe, and um, she has some rulers and stuff. I think I think I need to just do a whole video dedicated to Jane and some of the fantastic things she has. As a new quilter, if you're a new quilter, long arm or domestic, you have to check her out. She has wonderful work workbooks, um, rulers. I'm gonna make a Jane video. It'll be like why we love Jane. Um, but again, I'll link her below. Uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I'm getting close to that 3,000 subscribers. So I have a very special treat for prizes when that happens. And um, you know what? Love you all. Ha hopefully you're all staying safe and healthy. We'll see you in the next video. And bye, everybody. At the end of the day, it's just quilting. We want to laugh and we want to have a good time. And most of all, bye, Mickey.